Hi there everyone. This video I'm going to be showing how I made the uh, cutouts for the sub road bed for the Helix. Basically what I'm doing is I am going to be using my router to be able to cut out these uh, curved pieces of plywood. Uh, I'll be using 11 30 seconds plywood uh, that will be two of these pieces per level that will be sandwiched together uh, by glue and screws and they will be in a stagnated pattern uh, that way uh, they can uh, build on them each other for uh, strength. First thing I'm going to show you here is the jig that I built to be able to hold the plywood and also be able to be uh, long enough to be able to hold the pivot point uh, for the router. So what I have here is actually what you're looking at is two um, two by fours that were actually uh, supposed to be eight footers but I accidentally grabbed seven footers. So they actually work but uh, it, an ideal uh, ideally, the original plan was calling for a uh, two eight footers. Then in the center, I have got a ten foot two by four, and I've got on the end of that, I've got a piece of trim that I just happen to have laying around to make up the eleven thirty seconds, um, and we'll I'll you know, show you why. Um, pretty simple little jig to build, and uh, I just stick it on the side. I've got four helixes I will be building, um, so this jig will last for a while. Uh, with the four, this is the helix that I'll be showing is a double track. It's on a 30 inch and 32, 33 inch uh, track centers. And uh, the other three helixes that I have to build are all single track. So I'll be able to get more of these pieces per sheet of plywood uh, than I can currently with uh, doing a double track. So with that, I'll get a piece of plywood put on there and then we'll go from there. All right, next thing you want to do after you get your sheet of plywood on there is draw a line right down the center of it, right in the middle. So, yeah, make your marks at two foot on each side and then uh, go ahead and draw a line right down the middle of it. Once, you, once I've got that line drawn down here at the far end where I have the, the tongue part, I'm going to match up that line down there. Then I'm going to go to the other sheet of the plywood and kind of... I say guesstimate, but, but you know, use the tape measure to try to get my best to try to center that uh, the piece of uh, plywood on the jig. And then I will go ahead and uh, screw that down. Uh, I will screw it down in three places at first, basically to hold it down. And then as I get the lines drawn, I will show you that I'll put in two more screw anchor screws uh, to hold it down even more. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that... Uh, get the uh, piece of plywood uh, squared up. All right, so I got the piece of plywood screw, uh, squared up. I'm now gonna put two screws into the two by fours on, the, on this end. And then on the very other end, I'm gonna go ahead and put one right down the center line, right where the plywood ends. To be able to temporarily hold that in place. Next thing you're going to want to do is get your tape measure out. Now, like I mentioned earlier, that the radius on my helix is at 30 inch and 33 inch. So I went three inches on each side of that to be able to uh, give me a little bit of extra width, especially for the uh, threaded rod that I, uh, I'll show that later. So the first arc is going to be at uh, 36 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a mark down that center line at 36. Then I'm going to continue on down the sheet of plywood at 11 and a half inch intervals. I'm just going to keep marking at 11 and a half. Now if you're doing single track, This will be at a different increment. You'll have to kind of figure that out. You'll have to draw the first one. And then base off of that, and I'll show you why. Okay, like I was mentioning earlier, I got the 30 inch and 33 inch radius. And then my first cut with the router is gonna be at 36, and I'm putting three inches on each side of that. Now, you can do it at whatever interval that you want to do. Um, you know, if you uh, 
you're doing a, a smaller radius or a larger radius. Um, but what I've got here is I got a metal ruler. Uh, I think I got this from Menards, maybe Lowe's, I can't remember. Um, so I drilled a hole, if it didn't already have one, down here at zero. And then I drew, uh, drilled holes at 27, 30, 33, and 36. So I got my pencil mark holes here and then my pivot point at the zero. So I'm gonna go ahead, I got a small little screw here, and I'm gonna uh, first put it in a hole to get that screw started. Then all I'll do is just put this screw in for my pivot point. And this will also be the pivot point for your router uh, later on. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to start drawing my arcs at the various increments. So you got 36, 33, 30, then 27, and we'll finish this side. You're going to want to have a lot of pencils that are sharpened and ready to go. Uh, you'll break the lead. I don't know why you call it lead. It's actually graphite. But you'll end up breaking the points off um, quite regularly. Now, for the first one, and I'll explain this later when we get down to the basement. When you when you have your ruler still at that pivot point, you'll want to get it out here to your furthest line at the 36. And then just draw a line all the way through from 27 up to 36. Now, this is not, once you do this, this angle from here, and then when I bring the ruler around, is not going to be a 45 degree angle. So, you've got this in here as a preliminary cut, and then I'll show you in the basement what you'll end up having to do to eventually make a pattern out of one of these to be able to cut the rest of them out at. So the first one, I'll go ahead. Actually, it will be the first uh, first two because you'll need a couple of them. Now, 11 and a half inches for the next one. Question comes up, okay, how'd you get that 11 and a half inches? Basically what I did is I ended up bringing the ruler, because this is going to get cut off over here, this is scrap, there's nothing that says that my 36 inch arc can't come into this area. So I just measured to the point where I had 36 at that point, plus I gave myself about half an inch, then brought the ruler over to the center, the, the, the hole at zero, onto my center line, then I marked it, And then I just measured. Okay, what was for my first pivot point to where I need to put my second one? And in this case, but eh, actually, I might need to remeasure that. There we go, 11 and a half. So I'll go ahead. I'll pre-start the hole with just the screw. And you can use a power drill when doing this, but I prefer using just the hand pressure. Sometimes it's like using a cannon to kill a mosquito. Once I have that, then I'm gonna start again with the 36. And just go right back through again. So we have a 33, 30, and 27. Then I'm going to draw the lines again from where the 36 reaches the edge. Just draw from the 27 to the 36. This small little boom, which you'll see when I cut out, is the only scrap. And what I'll do here is I'll move. Uh, Move the camera so you can maybe hopefully see that a little bit better.
Yeah, it looks like you can see that from there. <coughs> now, it's just a matter of the process of uh, rinse and repeat. Re relocate the pivot point again, and just keep working your way all the way down the board. Okay, I have all the arts drawn that I need uh, for each piece. You're going to get seven full ones out of this sheet and a partial eighth at the very bottom. Now you see where I've got the ruler out there on the, what I'm calling the tongue of my jig. Um, so that way I can actually draw the lines on that very last arc. Um, we'll uh, zoom in a little bit so you can actually kind of get a, get a view of it there. So there's the very last piece. Like I said, it's a partial eighth one, so you can't get a full eighth, but it, almost enough to do um, about one and three quarter, um, or actually, yeah, I think, well, I got to figure it out, but I think it's almost about one and three quarter turn on a helix. Um, uh, or no, actually almost one, almost one turn, one complete turn on the helix, because I'm doubling these up. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get the router set up and then I'll show you uh, what I did for that jig. Okay, what I have here is I've got my plunge router mounted to a piece of eighth inch hardboard. What I did is I took the base plate that was on my router and put it on this uh, hardboard and drew out, drew the circles to where I need to put my mounting screws and where the hole was going to be for the router bit. Once I had that, and I cut this down to a taper. Yeah, you, yep, okay. Sorry, I needed to check. I cut this down to a taper, and then to get it down to that point. Now, once we flip it up, then from the center point of where your router bit is basically zero, then I went ahead and put my pivot points at 27, 30, 31, 33, 36, 38. I put in some just different extra ones in there. You can put them at whatever intervals you would like. But the router cuts I'm doing on this is at the 27 inch and 36. So those are the two pivot points I'll be using for this. So we'll go ahead. So you want to go at the very far end of the piece of plywood. And then, uh, now I used hardboard because that's what I had laying around. Uh, if, I, if I had to do it over again, probably the one change I would have done, instead of using hardboard, I probably would have used plexiglass. Um, because I'm going to be using the same pivot hole that I did for the ruler. And it's really tough to try to line it up to try to see through a piece of hardboard. To be able to actually get this lined up. So, let's see here. There we go. Alright. Well, so now you can see here, I'm going to be basically my router bit, so I'm going to be cutting down 36 inch. And I said earlier, on the center of the router bit. It's actually on the inside or the, the edge that's closest to your pivot points. That's what you want at zero. I just got a straight cut quarter inch bit in my router. So I got it plunged down, got it locked in. I'll get myself some power and then we'll make some noise. All right, now that I got my PPE on, we'll go ahead and uh, get this cut out. There's a 36 inch cut. Oh, one thing I didn't do yet is putting two more screws in here to anchor down the piece of plywood. So we'll go ahead 
Now, kind of tough to tell, but you got to look at these small little moon slivers that are dead space, um, that are going to be scrapped. But what I do is I just put these screws to hold this down through one of those so that way I know the router bits aren't going to hit it. Just put it down into the 2x4s that are uh, part of my jig. There we go. Alright, now well, let's get back to it. Alright, so that was the 36 inch cut. We're going to take up our pivot point. And move that to 27. So. Alright. There. Now we got that in there. Now. <clears throat> because our 36 inch line for the next one cuts through the 27. You do not want to cut edge to edge. You do that. You're going to mess that next piece up. So this is where the plunge comes in. It's going to be tough to see this, so I'm going to go ahead and move the camera. All right, so we got, we're getting ready to cut the 27 inch. Now remember, this is our 36 inch line for the next piece. It cuts through, intersects the 27 inch one, and comes out here to the edge. Your 27 inch cut line, you do not want to take it to the edge. Otherwise, you're going to mess this piece up. So this is where the plunge router comes in. We just go ahead and bring it over to here. Plunge it, start it up, plunge it down, and then we'll cut and then stop just short so that way we can uh, cut that small piece out. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. Alright, now that we got that cut out, I'm going to go ahead <coughs> and move our pivot point for the next piece to the 36 inch. Alright, now that we got our pivot point set, we're going to go ahead and cut from edge to edge on the 36 inch. All right, there's our first piece. Oh, didn't quite get a complete clean cut. All right, that's the scrap. And then right here is our sub road bed for the helix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue doing the exact same thing and cut out all the rest of these. And then uh, we'll go from, uh, we'll go on to the next step. As I was cutting this out, I wanted to be able to show how I've moved, already moved the pivot point onto the uh, tongue that sticks out from my jig. So you can kind of get a better idea just exactly why I've got that sitting out there. So that way um, I can extend my pivot point out there to be able to finish cutting the rest of this plywood. All right, we're going to finish getting this up. We're almost done. Okay, one more thing I want to add. Um, I had the piece of plywood moving on me a little bit while uh, routing it. So what I suggest is instead of just putting one screw down here uh, when you first set the plywood up, put one here and then about four inches down, put another one. Um, that will help stabilize this end um, when you get to down the, the, say, the last third of the ply, piece of plywood for routing cutting or route cutting. Now, what I'm going to do now, I've got all these pieces cut out. I'm going to go now on my table saw and cut these ends here off using these lines that I drew earlier. Uh, I'm going to go through, you can use your table saw, if you've got a big enough miter saw, you might be able to do it with that, maybe, I don't know, it might be a little bit difficult, but you might, yeah, you could probably put it, uh, cut them with a miter saw if you had like a, a 12 inch blade, um, or just a handheld circular saw or even a jigsaw will also work. So 
I'm going to go ahead, cut all these things off, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll move all these down to the basement, and then uh, we'll show you how, uh, how I'm setting these things up. Okay, what I have here, and I'll explain later in, in a different part, or later on in this video, is I've got one of these that I have matched up, so that way these seams on both corners will actually match up for the next piece. Remember how I was talking about it's not a true 45 degree angle. This one I've already adjusted. I've got it as a pattern. I put a P on it so I know. So when I'm drawing out my lines, I'm always matching up these two outside corners at the 36 inch radius. When I've got that matched up on one end, I make sure they're matched up on both ends. And then just go ahead and draw your cut line. And that's all you need to do. And you just do that for every single one of them. You just keep the one pattern board until you're completely done with your project. Now we'll go ahead and cut these, uh, do this for the rest of them and cut the ends off. Okay, we're down in the basement now where I've already started be building the helix. Uh, I started already putting together the sub road beds um, to make it a, a sandwich type of idea. I'm going to go ahead, I've got some extra ones sitting up here, so I'm going to go ahead and remove one so you can kind of get an idea of the spacing that I've got going on. What you'll be able to notice, I'll try to point this out to you. So I've got, I've got one layer here, another layer right down here. And you see my joints here and right here. So I've got a good eight inches or more that are overlap. So that way the two build off of each other for strength. And then, um, and then as it uh, continues around here, I'll zoom in on that in case you weren't able to uh, be able to actually see, make a camera adjustment. There we go. Um, so I'll point those out again. So you can see the joints of one level is right here, other joints right here. Um, and these two are glued and then uh, screwed together. And then what I've done is I started at one point and then just kept going around. Now what I'm going to end up doing is once I've got everything to the uh, for the length that I need, um, then I will drill all the holes at one time to go through all these layers and then down into the base for my threaded rod. That way it's no guessing or trying to make sure to get, try to line up the holes. This way it make it easier um, to put the threaded rod all um, in the exact hole where it needs to go. Now, these are not all glued and screwed together as one continuous piece. Each one is um, done. I almost have a complete one that way I can actually take one layer off at a time. I've got uh, about three and a half right now. Um, it'll end up being four when it's done. Um, and that way, I'll just put one layer down at a time, put the track on it, get it wired, then put the next one on. Um, but I wanted to, like I mentioned, I wanted to drill all the holes at one time uh, so that they're placed exactly where they need to be for the threaded rod. Now, once you've already cut these pieces out uh, from the uh, sheet of plywood, that I showed earlier, the not all of the edges are going to match. So right here's a perfect case of that. You can kind of see here where I have got um, approximately about a quarter inch gap here, and it's nice and tight right up here. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to each one of these are going to um, they're going to need to get tweaked every now and then. So what I do is whatever this spacing is right here, I usually just eyeball it, but you can actually measure it. And then put that spacing up here at the top. And that's, draw my line. Then I'll go back out to the table saw in the garage, cut this chunk off so that way I got a nice good seam uh, butt seam between these two and you'll when you'll get the hang of it once you've got one down that's pretty close I made one that was a pattern 
Um, so I get most of them that are really, really close, and then I'll get some oddballs like this one where um, I need to take it back out to the garage and actually cut it. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much everything on what I'm doing right now. Uh, once I uh, start getting the, everything all put together, I will post uh, more photos on our Facebook page. If you look, uh, if you do a Facebook search for uh, High Desert or Santa Fe hyphen High Desert Division, uh, take a look at the web, uh, the Facebook page. I've got a lot of photos and updates. I post a lot of photos and updates on that page. Uh, go ahead and uh, put in a member re member request, and I'll approve it. And that way, you can uh, get access to everything on there. Also, the uh, track plan is also on the files or is in the uh, file category. Uh, since we're in here, I'll just give you a little benefit of the preview. This is the staging area for two yards that will be mushroomed um, above this area. So, yeah, kind of a bit of a mess. I'm right in the middle of putting in uh, servos for turnout uh, control right now. And uh, But, yeah, feel free. If you haven't already subscribed to this to my channel, please do so for further, uh, so you can get alerts for... Uh, and the little bell, so that way you can get the uh, alerts for uh, uh, future uh, video updates. If you have questions, please put them down in the comments. I will answer them. It won't be right away, but um, I do check it uh, quite often just to see if there's any comments. Um, and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Thanks for watching, and happy modeling.